Good morning, everybody. I have found, finally, I've been looking for something to do other than the Lone Ranger and Groucho Marx. I've tried a few things and they just seemed too dramatic. There were some detective stories and murder mysteries and all that, but they get very, you know, drama-like and people are crying and everybody's a little too, too much for me. I want something that I can listen to and you can listen to and we can goof on. I want slappy, you know, Groucho Marxy kind of Lone Rangery goof on <laughs> the Lone Ranger sort of stuff. And I finally found something this morning, and it is called the Planet Man. The Planet Man. Let's check out the Planet Man. Uh, we got a picture here. The Planet Man is more or less an album. I don't know if it's an album cover particularly, but it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. The Planet Man. And he's up there on a planet doing whatever planet men do on planets, on mysterious planets. So let's uh, check out um, the planet man here. Uh, let's see, let me do that so I can uh, do what I gotta do. And there we are. And uh, this is the first of the uh, episodes. Not real sh I listened to a couple of seconds of it just to see, like I say, if it's goofy enough to, <laughs> to listen to. I don't want seriousness, seriousness just doesn't cut it for me so we're going to check out the planet man and the first series and these are shorter ones these are not 30 minutes long this is this one's like 11 minutes long there's 12 minutes so it's short ones which that in itself is a, is a plus so this is orbit the moon so apparently they're just getting going and they haven't even got to any planets yet except for uh, the moon well the moon's not a planet but you know what i mean Planet. Ooh, echoes. <laughs> See, goofy already. <laughs> we like goofy. <laughs> this is the fascinating story fascinating. of Dantro, the Planet Man, troubleshooter for the League of Planets organization. Dantro, he a said. Enforcement body for peace and justice in the celestial world, whose headquarters and center of operations are situated on the capital of all the planets. Planaria Rex. Plan Planaria Rex. From Mercury to Pluto, wherever danger threatens the universe, Pluto's not a planet. Dantro, the planet man, fighting for fair play. <laughs> the organ. <laughs> they just had In to have. moment, the planet man. They just had to have their organs back in those days. Come on now. Okay. <laughs> and Daddy, what do you when do we for left a living? The crew of Earth's first rocket expedition. Organ. They were heading for a crash on the moon. Okay. We find Dr. Darrow, his daughter Pat, Slats, the engineer, and our two young stowaways, Billy and Jane, discussing their dangerous predicament. The sound of the what complicated do do control now? mechanism Planet makes Man? the cabin seem like a chatterbox of confusion. And from the outside can be heard the mad whining of the lunar currents. We find them now as they're getting closer and closer to the moon's surface. Uh oh. Slats okay. is speaking. Our altimeter reading is dropping pretty fast, Professor. Isn't there any way we can break our fall on the moon? I've thought of everything, Pat, but there just doesn't seem to be any answer. The We're dead. The power we lost on takeoff was our only hope. Father, I know you don't like to do things second best, but in a situation <laughs> like this, it might be necessary. What do you mean, Pat? Well, what about using our remaining power to go into an orbit around the moon, as we discussed in our original plan? Yes, but what good will that do? We still come to the same end, except that the agony will be prolonged. <laughs> Let's do it, Professor. We got nothing to Lose. Whatever it is, I'm game, Uncle John. Me too, Uncle John. You know what they How say, Professor, people? where there's life, there's hope. It'll be a ticklish maneuver now since we've gotten into the pull of the moon and our power is limited. But if the rest of you are game, so am I. Stand by to maneuver. Let's do it. Pat, start the reactor. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Slats, check the radar rangefinder and make sure you pinpoint those readings on the moon. Sla yes, sir. Slats, I guess slats. Pilot, now keep your fingers crossed. Heading 10 degrees starboard. Heading 10 degrees starboard. This is Cut like... Reactor, Pat. Cutting reactor. Lost in space. What's our reading? It's 63.3. A whole family up there. Get it again, Pat. Reactor on. <laughs> Are we picking it up fast enough, Slats? What's the reading? Not enough, Professor. We need a fraction more. Are you sure, Slats? I've got our heading way over, and our power can't last much longer with such a radical course heading. Slats, give me a reading. Slats, do you hear me? Slats. Give me a reading. It's 89.4. Six more points, Professor. That's the end of our power. I hope we make it. Steady, steady. They're gonna make it. Come on. Just a bit more, old Ironsides. There, there. 
Well, we made it. We made it, <laughs> Professor. Good, right on the what, are they landed? Hey, <laughs> high we fives all around. About? We're right in the middle of nowhere. You mean that we're not going to land on the moon after all? I'm afraid not, Billy. Oh, they What's didn't land. Happen? Nothing, Jane. We're just going to circle the moon the way the moon circles the Earth. Yeah, just see? Just look at that view of the moon. Ain't that what great? What a break. So near and yet so far. That's what I say. Uncle John! Uncle John! What? Something is happening to the air. It's, it's getting stuffy in here. I know, Billy. It's uh -oh. the air circulator slowing down. Breathing will be just a bit difficult from now on until our oxygen until we're all dead. <laughs> Can you hear me? Slats, where are you? What are you up to? I'm outside the ship, bringing up the lunar communications generator. Thought we might as well set it up and try to make contact with the Earth. You can't do that alone. I'm here too. Careful, Pat. Don't let go. Hell. <laughs> Pat, Pat. Slats, grab her. She's floating away. What? Quick, Slats. Slats, uh, help me. Oh, oh. Help me. Pat, here. Grab my hand. This is goofier than I thought. <laughs> Even for me. There we are. There we are. Eddie, now. He pulled her back, Uncle John. Pat, Slats, is everything all right? Yes, Father. Thanks to Slats. I thought I was a goner. Don't forget slats. you're out in space, Pat. And well, if you ever drift slats. away, we'd never be able to get you back. It's all okay now, Professor. We're coming in. <laughs> they could definitely do without the organ. It's louder than anything else. Pat? Yes, Billy? Jane and I know what's going on. What are you talking about? Pat, you, you and Slats got a thing. We know the trip was spoiled because we stowed aboard. It's all our fault. Now listen to me, you two, and stop feeling guilty. It wasn't the best idea for you to sneak aboard, but it did happen. And besides, we could have been wrong in our calculations. Yeah. The important thing now is for all of us to face up to whatever lies ahead. That's right. And I know that you two won't let me down. We'll do Never it. Never, Not us, Pat. All right, now okay. let's just forget the whole thing. That's right. I wonder where Slap or I'll slap. <laughs> we'll return to Planet Man in just a moment. Oh, what do you got? What is so, it, Marshall? level on. What the heck? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so level well, off. Well, it looks like the first trip from Earth to the moon is coming to its tragic end. The good ship Constitution is in a hopeless orbit about the moon. The entire crew is slowly suffocating okay. because the oxygen supply is coming to an end. All right. Professor Darrow and Slats are in the posterior cargo chamber. Posterior. Slats is apparently up to something. Why, what you doing, why don't Slats? you go to the control cabin, Professor, and lie down for a while? It'll be easier for you to breathe. I think I'd better stay here. I hate to have Pat and the kids see me so worried and worn out. Yeah. Well, Slats, you've got something on your mind. What is it? Well, I, I've been thinking, Professor. Again. I really haven't got anybody. Nobody would miss me, and you and Pat and the kids. So I'm going to sacrifice now, myself. what are you driving at? Well, a big guy like me uses a lot of oxygen. All I have to do is to step through that port and it'll be all over in a second. You people will have a little longer. Don't be a fool, Don't Slats. We're all in this together. Stupid Besides, Slats. if anybody goes through the port, it will be me. It'll be me. I'm, I'm the old. oldest. And besides, the whole thing is my responsibility. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Whatever you say, now boss. Look, Professor, I've made up my mind. There's no point in trying to stop me. No, Slats, don't, don't do it. We're stop both. Me, Professor. I'll hit you. <laughs> Out the door with I the didn't two mean of you. I'm to hurt you, Professor, but this is the way it's got to be. Professor? Who? I, I'm, I'm still. So long, Professor. Fuzzy on the name. Sounds what? like he's opening what? a kitchen What's door. That? What's going on in there? Huh? What's that clanging? We're not clanging anything. I thought it was you. Slats! Slats, look out the door. Quick! What? Look at that! Gosh. It's mammoth! Professor, Professor, get up. Something's happened. What? There's, there's something next to our ship. Huh? Oh, oh, another ship. A ship? An uh, yeah, alien one. Me, let me see that. What? It's impossible. But it looks like another ship is next to ours. Let me help you, Professor. We must get to the control Must be the moon the people. Father, Slats, what is it? I don't know, but now we'd better stay close together. Slats, where are you going? Just to get this fishing wrench. I don't know what's coming through that hatch, but I'm not taking any chance. Well, be careful and don't get too Let, close let's to Let's kill hatch. it first thing. Be very quiet. The usual reaction. It's different, so oh. kill it. Uncle John, look! 
Stand back, whatever you are. I'll... <laughs> Look at Sledge. He can't move. He's frozen in his tracks. Oh, cool. Sledge. Why, it's a man. Poor old what Sledge. did you expect? A three-headed Mercurian man-eater? This must be... I am a man planet from the planets. Man. Oh, a the planet man. The planets. Boy, wait till the gang hears oh. about this. Silly, please. My I name is Dantro, the planet man. And I come in peace. From where? I represent the League of Planets. Oh. And my mission is to bring all of you to Planaria Rex. Pla Planaria oh. Rex? Now I'm getting League it. Of planets? Where is that? I'll explain in a moment. Just keep But I don't quiet. think we should leave your brave friend Slats in this paralyzed predicament. Good He'll idea. snap right out of it with a shot you of speak his rage unneutralized. How unusual. <laughs> what, what, what happened? Did I get him? Oh, <laughs> it's all right, Slats. We're all safe. It seems that we've met a friend. It, yeah. And his name is Dantro, the planet man. It's nice to meet a brave man like you, Slats. Here, let me help Ready you up. Crack oh. me in the head with a wrench. Dantro, my name is John Darrow. This is my daughter and assistant, Pat. How do you do? And uh, I think you've already met uh, Slats. Yeah. And these two are Jane and Billy, my niece Stowaways. and... Stowaways. Well, it's hi. a pleasure to know you all. You see, we've really known you for a long time. We've been watching. We've been able to watch your experiments. Uh -huh. In fact, we've been in touch with this entire mm. trip of yours. We're kind of nervous we've with even your atom bombs your and stuff. But how could you do all that? We planet men have many devices which Earth mm. has not yet discovered. That's right. And one of them is the cosmic communicator, which enables us to see and hear across the millions of miles of space. But why have you kept the existence of the League of Planets cosmic from the Earth? Where is Planaria Rex, and why haven't I been able to chart its position? Everything will be explained well, to you in due time. First of all, it wouldn't be called Planetaria X. It's coming from my ship. We must hurry along. Uh, 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 it's the bogey warning uh, oscillator telling us there are some unidentified ships approaching. But we can't uh -oh. leave the Constitution. Must be Klingons. Again with the Klingons. safe in this orbit for a thousand years. We must not waste time. <laughs> Will I get a space suit like yours? Will you let me fly the no. ship? No. see, Billy. children are no different from ours. <laughs> There's our last warning. Quick, through the hatch into my ship, the Planeteer. Planeteer going to Planetary X. Planarian. Dantro. Surprised his what name isn't Planetro. What adventures lie ahead for the Earth people? What will they find on Planaria Rex? I don't know. Whose ships are those approaching the helpless Constitution? <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. Do we have but a commercial? First, here is a message that Dantro the Planet Man oh. wants you to hear. Okay, Dantro. Lay it on me. Smoke Marlboro. <laughs> Tune in again for more transcribed thrills and adventures. Find out what happens to the Earth people as they speed toward a new world on Planaria Rex. Plan Rocket millions of light years into space with Dan Tro, the Planet Man. <laughs> planet I thought. There's the first one. So that sets the, the scenario here. I thought that uh, planet... The planet man. Oh, we don't want... No. Oh, we're starting a new one. We don't want to start a new one. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Um, I thought that the uh, planet man was an earthling and he was just up there doing stuff. What planet men do, you know. But no, apparently he's from Planaria X and... They've been watching us Earthlings, and uh, they got a bit nervous because, like I said before, the uh, atom bombs and stuff going on, and all the wars and the killings and stuff. So they, you know, they've been watching us. But uh, okay, so there it is. I was, uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm learning myself what's going on here with Planet Man, Dandro, by the name. <sighs> but yeah, it's it's even more corny and silly than I thought it was gonna be. But if you can hang in there, I'm gonna do some more. I'm now I'm intrigued. I want to know what's going on. You got these two little kids, whoever they are, stowed away, and Susie, or whoever or whatever her name is, the girl. So it is like um, lost in space. You know, you got this gang of people, the professor, you know, and then. The guy with the wrench who was wanting to crack a planet man in the head. What's his name? I forget already. Uh, and uh, then you got the girl, the daughter, Jane, Sue, Alice, whatever her name is. And uh, the boy, little Johnny, somebody or other, and two stowaways, wherever they are. 
Whoever they are, that'd be uh, the um, what, what's his name, uh, the, the, who stole away. I can't even think of his name. Um, Mr. Smith, Doctor Smith, oh, Will, him. So it's kind of you know what I mean. Though this was way before uh, Lost in Space, but I, I think it's kind of you know as far as the crew goes. So here they are. They're gonna get to, now. They're gonna get taken off to Planaria X. Now, how, what about Earth? Doesn't Earth know that this is going on? Have they uh, lost communications with Earth? And Earth is like, uh, you know, so what's going on up there around the moon there, Professor? Planet Man has taken us to... Yeah, anyway. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We're on our way. The Planet Man. So hang in there. So we're going to do some more. And I think I might do the second one right now, but it's going to be a separate video. All right, folks. Stay tuned. <laughs>